I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevnik. Welcome to Creek Devil. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Bigfoot, America's Creek Devil. Tom, you've had the pleasure of talking with John, so do you want to uh, initiate this? Yeah, I sure do. Uh, I want to welcome John aboard, and uh, real quick, I just want to make our standard announcement. Um, you guys know what to do. If you like the show, let us know. Just click the like and subscribe and the share button. And if you want to take it a step further, you can do that. You can either go to patreon.com forward slash Creek Devil. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can become a member of uh, our Creek Devil Patreon team. Uh, or you can just click the link if you're watching us on YouTube. Uh, just click the link, and that'll take you right over there. It's in the description. So, with that long-winded explanation... Let, let me make one little announcement, too, Tom. Um, I wanted to say thanks to everyone. We've been asking for people to like the videos because it really helps with the YouTube's algorithm. And I've noticed that's really picked up. So, thanks, everyone, for doing that. It's a big help. Yes, it certainly has. Yeah. So, with, with all that out of the way, um, John, welcome aboard. And... You've had some encounters with uh, with our topic, so I'm going to hand the mic to you, figuratively speaking, and just start from the beginning. What's uh, what's going on, and what have you what have you encountered? Um. Well, my name's John Cartwright. I am from the uh, Virginia Beach area in Virginia, and uh, right now I live in Ohio, um, in a little town called Shelby. And um, if you hear my hound dogs howling, I apologize. <laughs> um, I uh, I had an encounter, and it was in uh, Pasquotank County, North Carolina, which is uh, on the edge of the Great Dismal Swamp. And it was on some property that my, my best friend's uncle, I mean, un uncle and father owned. Um, it was a hunting property they had, and it was in uh, 1982. It was Labor Day weekend, um, 1982, and I was uh, 17 years old. I was about to turn 18, and uh, uh, do you want me to just jump into the encounter, or what do you want me to do? Well, yeah, Um Whatever you want to do, however you, it's, uh, yeah, go okay. ahead and jump into the encounter. Well, fill us in on what led up to the encounter. Were you guys going hunting, fishing, camping, uh, some of the details? And, okay. uh, yeah, and then what happened? Okay. Well, yeah, like I said, it was Labor Day weekend, and um, I, I was with my friend and his father and his uncle. And they had a hunting property down in Pasquotank County, North Carolina. And um, it was my first time hunting. Uh, and so it was it was really early in the morning when we started. And it was, you know, the sun was coming up. It was probably about 6 a.m. And, uh, you know, they gave me a uh, small uh, rifle. And I can't remember what it was, but it was, you know, it was just a deer hunting rifle. And here in Virginia, in North Carolina area, there the deer are really small, so it was a really small caliber rifle. Um, they dropped me off at a, um, a a deer stand. It was about ten or fifteen feet up in a in a tree. Um, it was like a platform. And it had uh, some, uh, like, netting around it, and it was camouflaged. And I climbed up in there and um, got myself comfortable, sat, uh, sit down on a stool. And um, it was really nice. It was really cool, something I had never done. 
I did, did see, um, you know, three or four deer, and uh, and I saw, got to saw, see a black bear, a small one, <clears throat> and um, it was really. Uh, of course, I'm, I didn't take a shot in it. I didn't really plan on shooting anything. Uh, anyway, I was just there for the experience, and um, about. I would say the first, it was about nine o'clock in the morning. I had been there for, you know, two or three hours. And um, <clears throat> the first thing that happened to me was a horrible smell. And it was, um, it was like the worst thing I had ever smelled in my life. It was like uh, rotten eggs and and rotted meat and like uh, ammonia and <clears throat> and it, it was it affected me more than just being a um a smell it like made me dizzy and i kind of fell down on the floor of the the blind and you know and it was like the world was spinning around and i was dizzy and you know getting sick my stomach I didn't throw up but I felt like I had to throw up and that lasted a few minutes and I, I finally it's I shook it off and I was you know shook it off and I was able to sit back up in the in the chair and you know I'm sitting there wondering you know what the heck just happened to me you know, and where did that come from and I was really confused and I sat back down and then all I started to hear noises like something was moving through the brush and the woods and cracking, you know, sticks cracking and branches cracking and footsteps and leaves moving. And um, I was like, oh, cool. This, you know, there's going to be a, it's a deer, it's a bear, something's coming. And I was getting ready. <clears throat> and um, I'm looking in about, I would say, 30 yards um, away from me. It it came it came it stepped out and I could see it was a it was a bigfoot creature. And here comes a truck. I apologize. <laughs> I'll stop first. Okay, and it stepped out. And it, you know, it had its back to me, and it was uh, stood there, and it was eating mulberries, which is which grow a lot then down there in that area. And um, I was like, you know, cool, it's a bear. And then I started watching it, really, you know, looking really close, and my and my head cleared up better, and I could see really good. And it reached out. And it picked one of the berries, and it was, um, I was like, oh my gosh, it's got hands, that's not a bear, that's a, that's a Bigfoot. You know, it kind of hit me with shock. And it, um, you know, like a ton of bricks, it was like, you know, this is a Bigfoot. And, you know, I didn't have a lot of Bigfoot experience at that point you know i never even thought about it very much but i did see you know a couple things on tv and so i you know knew the name and what it was and uh it stepped out in front of me and i was watching it for about uh let's see you know oh Five minutes, and it was it was eating. It would reach out and it would grab a berry, and it would put it in its mouth. And it was you know, and if it didn't like it, I saw it spit. It spit some of them out. I guess it didn't like some of them, but some of them it did. It would and it would stood there, and it ate. Um, it would look it would look right. It would look left. I saw a lot of pro profile. I saw the back of it. It was about four feet wide at the shoulders, dark black, brown. Um, it had a, a very muscular build. Um, 
it was uh it had a um a little crest that ran up the back of its head and it kind of had a pointy little top to and it sloped down in the front and it had a big brow ridge and a big old flat nose dark eyes couldn't see the eyes very well um big teeth when I, you know it, they were white too i could see they were very white the teeth and they were big, you know they were just like a regular human's teeth but bigger and it sat there for and it ate and i uh, you know watched it for about 5 minutes and then it uh it stepped away, and I couldn't see it anymore, but I could hear it. And I heard it for about five more minutes moving through on its way. And, you know, and then it was gone. And, you know, and ever since then, um, you know, I didn't go back in the woods. That was 1982, my first time back. In the woods was uh, 2008, um, because uh, a friend, uh, one of my friends now, Billy Willard, he's a Bigfoot researcher. Um, you know, I hooked up with him, and he took me out in the woods, and you know, and I felt okay and easy, and I started, you know. Going, going out with him in Northern Virginia a lot out, up there. And, and of, of course, I started getting into the, uh, the Bigfoot uh, pop, you know, the Bigfoot people. I got to meet a lot of people, went to a lot of conferences, um, was a member of the Sasquatch Watch of Virginia for, I don't know, eight to ten years something like that and um eventually uh i met well, my wife at one of the bigfoot conferences that i'm married to now and um she had an encounter also when she was a teenager and here in ohio though not not in virginia like mine and um we got married and i moved up here to um Ohio because well, we we do we can do a lot more big there's a lot of more, a lot more big footing um, places here in Ohio than in, than in Virginia where I was from we are actually not far from a hot spot where I live I live in the country now um, and uh, that's about it did you have any other questions well I just I, just, I, I had one question so. You, you saw it in uh, Virginia. I no, was North gonna... Carolina. It was North oh, Carolina. North... Oh, North Carolina. Okay, all right. But you're originally from Virginia. Oh, I was gonna. I'm just gonna say uh, that I, I think I lived, there's... where I live. Where I live was only like a, an hour from the border to, into North Carolina, and the, it's uh, and right on the border is where the Great Dismal Swamp is at. And and we, but we were in North on the North Carolina side of the border. Okay, and what's it called? The Great Dismal Swamp. Yes, the Great Dismal Swamp. It's okay. it's near it's in Pasquotank County, North Carolina. Well, there's a ten mile by ten mile by ten mile square between um, Virginia and Maryland. It also has a dismal swamp in it. Um, they're not Bigfoots, but I think they're big mouths. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> yeah. No, uh, that's interesting. I, um, we've heard, I've heard about activity in North Carolina, but I think one of our panel members uh, probably is more familiar with that uh, area than I am. Yes, I am, Tom. I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John, this is David. I'm in central North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a certain national forest south uh, Pasquotauk County. I won't say the name of it, but there that is a well-known area of activity. So I wouldn't be surprised if the ones you were experiencing in Northeast Carolina are from 
this certain national forest. Have you ever heard of any other people seeing anything or reporting anything? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, I used to speak to people a lot. You know, when I when I was really when I was down there living there, and we were um, I was really involved in the Sasquatch Watch of Virginia. We went to <clears throat> several places in Virginia, and actually all over the country, but a lot in Virginia. And um, that that area, there were four or five witnesses that I spoke to that were. Um, they had a lot of road uh, uh, crossing, you know, road crossings, sightings, you know, and, or, or they would be standing on the side of the road. A lot of, you know, cars and trucks going by. I must have talked to about 10 people that had, you know, sightings of them just standing there on the side of the road um, as they were going by. Uh, that's not that surprising area. they're they're all through that area along the coast yeah um it's a it's a they got everything they need there they sure do. there's lots of deer there's lots of uh um like i said you know berries and plants and water and it's a it's perfect habitat it's a very it's a very diverse area for sure yes i um it's everything i mean there's lots of black bear so you know if they're um if, if a bear can find enough food to live there i'm sure bigfoot can too oh definitely and uh well john <clears throat> this is chuck mm -hmm. i live in uh i live in oklahoma and i y your first encounter your first sighting is always a mind-changing event obviously Mm -hmm. And uh, the, question, the question I have for you is, did you did you ever sense while you were watching this thing, did you ever get the sense that he knew that you were there at all? I get asked that question a lot, and I am not sure. If it, if it I don't, I would say no. Uh, because, as you know, uh, it would, I would think, it didn't really look directly at me ever it when it would turn it looked it would turn you know like it's the whole t whole top of its body would turn and peek over one shoulder and then turn the other way and peek over the other shoulder it would do that constantly but i didn't it never really looked directly at me so i would think no it didn't know i was there very interesting it either didn't know you were there or it just didn't care you were not a threat to it. It's one of the two. Yeah, I was just, you know, a boy. Yeah. <laughs> there, I was absolutely no threat. And I, the gun I had would have, wouldn't, probably wouldn't have killed me. It was a small caliber rifle. Hey, John, can you tell us a little bit about your wife's encounter by chance in Ohio? Yeah, sure. I can tell you. Uh, her her encounter was um, in what's the name of that place? Um, Mohican State Forest. Okay. Uh, which is a really hot spot. If you just been a lot of sightings there, um, and she used to live right outside of that area. And right now, I live. I only live a half hour away from there, so it's not that far away from me now. Um, she was uh, with her best friend, and they were um, just walking a trail. Uh, it's the main trail that's up there in a Mohican. And um, you get to, there's a spot on the trail. It's even been on the, um, the Bobo and Clip, uh, Finding Bigfoot. They've already, they've even, they've even done a, a show that's from that from that area, Mohican State Park. And uh, there's a trail. And once you get to a certain spot, you're um, you're walking right by a cliff. Um, uh, and it, it's about uh, 50, feet, 50 feet above your head. And um, that's where they saw it. It was standing right at the top of that cliff. And... Um, 
it was she said it was it was um rocking back and forth as it was looking at her and um and her and her friend and you know of course that um they were you know 20 years old at the time and you know a couple young girls and uh, you know it scared the Jesus yeah. Did they get a good look they, at they it? Were, to describe it. Yeah, she just she described it. She said it was it was it was um huge, <laughs> you know, <laughs> nine feet tall, um, muscular, uh, had the conical shape too. It said you know the classic Bigfoot um, description, uh, you know, conical head. Um, she could see it. Um, you know, swaying back and forth, and and moving its head as it looked at them, and and it 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 you know didn't look look like it was uh frightened by them or anything. It was kind of curious. You know, when the, whenever like, they whenever they sway back and forth like that, that usually indicates they're agitated. Oh, that could have been the case. Yeah, I'm. I'm um. Because there was two of them, you know, there was two, two young, uh, you know, early, early 20s uh, women uh, looking, you know, looking up and uh, they were actually, they were actually out there bigfooting when they, when they had the sighting. So that's why I said it's a hot spot for a lot of people. A lot of researchers go, go out there and um, they, and they, you know, got lucky one day and. So that's only that's only one she had. She was, they were doing it for you know five years. You know they were hitting that every weekend. You know when they were off work and uh, doing research there. So Did and you know say, I met. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> Did she say how long the encounter lasted? What did it eventually just walk away on its own, or did they leave yeah. first? What happened. Yeah, she said it was just, you know, it was a couple minutes. It was a couple minutes. It stood there and it kind of, you know, swayed back and forth and, and stared at them. And um, it was about, <clears throat> um, I think it was in the middle, it was like nine or, it was like not noon, but getting, you know, getting close to noon time. So it was, it was clear, I believe. And, uh, she, um, that, that area, you know, her and her friend were there all the time and they were doing, actually doing the Bigfoot research. That's, that's how I met her. It was at a Bigfoot conference. So, um, and yeah, you know, Bigfoot's never done anything for me, but find me a wife. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, buddy. You so, came out ahead yeah. of that deal. Hey, I got yeah, a question um, for you. Is she, would she, I, I'm just going to kind of go for the gusto here. Go ahead. Does she happen to, happen to be in the house and would she be willing to hop on for a minute or two and just describe her encounter? Well, I can ask her. One second. I'm outside, so I got to walk back in the house. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, no problem. She, she might say no, so don't be insulted. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Okay. Uh, no, I'm sorry. She doesn't want to. <laughs> I apologize. Yeah, no, no, no apology necessary whatsoever. No, that's absolutely fine. Sounds like she's got her hands full. <laughs> yeah, she does. She's she's got her hands full right now. Yeah, well, that's certainly more important. Absolutely. Um, I, I'll tell I'll, I'll tell her to contact you sometime. Oh, we'd love to hear from her. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm a little curious now. This one that walked in to the one that you saw, it sounds like it walked into the clearing and turned around um, so that it had its back to you. Or how, how did how did that work? Well, um, it was there was brush around it. I couldn't see anything below the waist of the of the, of the creature. Um, it stepped, what it did is it stepped out and it turned and it had its back to me 
and it was this huge uh, mulberry bush tree that it was that was that it was eating off of, and it was picking um, berries off of it and eating them. And later on, when um, my friends came back to you know get me from the tree stand, uh, you know, of course I told them what happened, and of course they. <laughs> you know, laugh me out of place. And, um, but I, I walked over to where it was standing and I, I got a gauge, you know, of how big it was because I could see where its head was compared to a tree that was nearby. And, and um, it was every bit of nine feet tall, probably. <laughs> it was very, very big. So, and I think you already said this, but um, you said it was brown, with a little bit of black, or what was what what was the color? Yeah, thing? yeah, it was it it was it looked grayish in some parts, and and then dark brown or black in some parts. Um. So, um, yeah, and the, the light was, like, reflecting off of, you know, when it uh, moved a certain way. You know how the light gets right on a, a certain spot, and that's where it was standing. So I got a really good look at it. <laughs> yeah, interesting. And uh, for our viewers that don't know, and that would kind of include me mulberries I've and heard of them. can you hear me yeah I can hear you just fine hello yes can you hear me that's <laughs> that's important that we can hear each other we can hear you John uh oh maybe it's cut out on his end may have lost signal yeah, it's, it's showing He's in there. trying to talk. Yeah, yeah, I see it there. John, oh, if you yeah. can hear us, we can't hear you right now. But we're going to try to bring you back in. Oh, okay. It says he left. Let's uh, let me bring him back here real quick. Let's see. Okay, there he is. Yeah, we'll go. Hey, hey John. Hey, sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Oh, we know. <laughs> Technology, schmacknology. Um, <laughs> no, we were just talking that you're you're telling us the color of the creature, and uh, and I was just I was going to ask you about mulberry bushes. I don't think we, to the best of my knowledge, will are they a West Coast thing at all, or are they kind of more East Coast? You know, I don't know for sure. Yeah. From what from what I was told, it's more of a of an East Coast thing. You know, I, I have done research all over the country. I've been in your area. I've been in um, several different states. Um, and I, I think it was it's just something that's uh, in that southeast part of the country. Yeah, but the important thing is, do they taste good? No. <laughs> I don't know. I, good question. I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. You haven't, you haven't tried them yourself then? Uh no, I haven't. I don't think so. No. Okay. Tom, they're okay, but blackberries are better. Well, I'm with you there, buddy. I love yeah, blackberries. They're, they're, they're kind of similar to blackberries, though. They're just I'm not quite <laughs> as good. <laughs> yeah. Well, John, I want to thank you. That's a very interesting encounter, and uh, I love the location. Great. Oh, I do too. It's a beautiful part of the country. If you've never yeah. been there, it's a. Uh, I've been uh, all up and down the East Coast, but I haven't been there. Uh, at night, if you, if you go down there and you're driving on one of those uh, back roads, and it's it's, it's really spooky. <laughs> it's really spooky in that swamp. Is that right? <laughs> David knows way more about it than I do. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, Todd, you got a place to stay whenever you want to come down. So come on, all man. Right. I'll give you a holler. You betcha. All right. All right, John. Listen, thank you. We appreciate you coming on. 
Oh, well, thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks um, for joining us, uh, John. Appreciate it. All right, I'll try, to, just, I'll try to get my wife to contact you if she wants okay. to come on. Yeah, that'd be great. And go ahead and stay on for just a minute. We've got a question for you. Okay. I got time. I'm not in a hurry. Okay. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for listening to this episode of Creek Devil. If you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures, please contact us at williamjevning at yahoo.com. That's William, J E V N I N G, at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. And until then, keep your eyes open now.